Hello and welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. This is number seven in a series of beginner ham radio podcasts and I hope you enjoy it. Uh, today we're going to try to cover a lot of things in the ham radio uh, hobby. I'm going to show you a bunch of different modes of operation, several different radios, uh, even a radio that looks like a flash drive, in a way. Uh, and I hope you find it real interesting. And maybe something here will perk your interest uh, to either get involved in a new mode of operation in ham radio or to get involved in the hobby uh, as a brand new beginner and go take your, your technician's test and your uh, general test and your extra test. So with that said, uh, let's get started with the radio that I bought first even before I had a license, I actually stepped out there and bought an, what I call an all-band radio before I ever had a license to operate. And I used that radio for probably three or four months while I was studying for my technician's test. I would dial around and listen and on the radio. Couldn't transmit, but I could sure listen. And uh, a lot of things that uh, I learned in setting up that radio helped me on the first exam. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, my experience will help you. So let's get started with where everyone starts, and that's with uh, what's called VHF UHF uh, communications. And, all that means it's a higher frequency, a higher frequency, VHF, UHF. Also referred to as 2 meter and 70 centimeter transmissions. And there's a particular segment of the radio spectrum that's allocated to licensed uh, amateur radio operators and that's where we transmit on when we transmit VHF, UHF. In a prior video, I've showed you a little handy talkie, a little hand carry device that would probably make a good uh, first radio for you for VHF, UHF. But in my case, <clears throat> I actually bought the handy talkie second. The first thing I bought was this ICOM 7000. And I know a lot of you are saying that, uh, uh, boy, that's a lot of money to spend when you don't even have a license and you don't know if you're going to pursue the hobby. Yeah, it was, but it really wasn't much of a gamble because I knew I could sell it for just about what I paid for it if I didn't like the hobby and it gave me an incentive to pass the test. In fact, it gave me an incentive to pass the technician's test and the general test because this is a, what I call an all-band radio. Let's turn it on. First thing we do is turn on the power supply, which is this big box here, and all this is doing is giving 12 volts to this radio, 13.8 volts to be exact which is the exact same uh, current that you would get from an automobile battery. So I let it uh, kind of uh, start up and equalize, you know, get to running a little bit, and then I switch on the radio. And there we go. And the ICOM is up and running, and I don't know if you can see the screen, but it's uh, right now tuned to 441. 0.525, which is the frequency of the Rockwall Amateur Radio Club repeater. Now, a repeater is a radio located somewhere with a good antenna, usually up real high, and transmitting uh, 50 watts or something like that. And you can talk to that repeater 
and it repeats your signal over the air in a much wider area. Uh, so I could talk to it with that little 5 watt handy talkie I showed you in a previous video and it would come out with a lot more power and uh, they could probably hear me all the way from Rockwall to almost Greenville, Texas. So that's what repeaters are used for. And so it's tuned to that right now. But I've got a bunch of frequencies in already in memory in this machine and we can look at them. Uh, there's the Dallas Amateur Radio Club frequency, which is 146.880, and that's the Dallas Amateur Radio Club repeater, uh, W5FC. That's the name of that repeater. You could Google that, W5FC, and you find out all about uh, the repeater and the frequencies and how you're able to communicate with it by sending out tones that you can't hear audibly but the repeater can hear them and it allows you in and out so without these tones if I if I set this radio up and uh, didn't put those in audible tones into this radio and it's just simply a series of numbers uh, then uh, my signal would not go out the repeater it's got to hear those in audible tones so uh, <clears throat> another way to communicate is what's called simplex there are no tones it's just I'm talking and somebody else on the same frequency is listening and talking back to me. But in the case of VHF, UHF, the signals don't travel very far. It's totally dependent on line of sight. And you might get a little what's called ground wave propagation, but uh, very doubtful. It just depends on how high up you are and how high up the person you're trying to talk to happens to be and can the two antennas see each other. And if they can, uh, more than likely within a certain distance you can communicate simplex. So there are simplex frequencies and I've got the, the bare frequencies set up on the radio so that I can just dial to them and then turn the knob and go to the exact uh, simplex frequency that the other person may be transmitting on. But what's uh, really neat about this uh, particular radio, ICOM 7000, is it also has all the what, what's called high frequency HF uh, bands on it, bands being uh, in meters I know that's confusing to you. They're in meters and they have numbers like 160 meters and 80 meters and 40 meters and 20 meters and 10 meters and 6 meters and I already mentioned 2 meters and I know that's confusing to you just uh, as a general statement, very general because sometimes you can talk a long way on 2 meters but it has to be just the right propagation conditions. So as a general statement, when you see the meters, uh, it kind of tells you uh, how far you're going to be able to talk, all things being equal. So uh, you know you're not going to talk very far on two and Six, uh, you're not going to talk a whole long ways on six unless there's what's called tropospheric propagation, which means there's some weather systems that are causing the signal to travel farther. Uh, Ten meters is great when there's a lot of solar activity and the ionosphere uh, bounces your signal. It travels a long way. You can literally talk around the world on not a lot of power when 10 meters is what's called open. When you hear a ham say 10 meters is open, that means 
he's hearing transmissions uh, coming in on that particular band and uh, it's time to go over there and see if you can make a contact. Generally, uh, 20 meters you'll find is open most of the year during the day. Uh, it tends to go away at night. When the sun goes down, wherever you are, uh, 20 meters kind of fades out and 40 meters tends to pick up. So knowing these few little tricks, you know kind of what band to dial around on. Uh, 80 meters, or some people call it 75 meters, 80 meters. <clears throat> That's used for what we call rag chew, nets. There's a lot of nets on 80 meters and just folks talking back and forth. Not a long ways, uh, usually statewide. Yeah, on 80 meters, uh, I've made long distance contacts, you know, to Illinois and other places on 80 meters, but uh, generally it's used for shorter distance communications along with 160 meters. So what are the primary bands that I personally use? Well, I, generally I'm on 20 or 40, those two. 20 meters or 40 meters, depends on the time of day, 20 meters during the day, 40 meters at night. Once in a while I get on uh, 80 meters and when 10 meters is open I jump on 10 meters and see who I can contact. So this radio has all those frequencies, uh, capabilities built in. So I can push a button and I can just dial through those bands. So let me go to 20 meters. Let me go to 20 meters. And you're hearing some digital signals right now. I was listening to digital a little earlier. Let me kind of dial up the band and we'll let you hear some 20 meter communications. So as you can see the one signal is very readable but the person he's talking to uh, is not very readable. That's the way it works. It's called propagation and uh, I'm getting the bounce down signal from the ionosphere from the first uh, guy talking, uh, but I can't quite hear or hear him very weakly in the background from whoever he's talking to because propagation between me and him is not as good as it is between the first guy that you heard. So that's what all those, uh, that jargon means. Let's continue to dial up the band. How about uh, EP Cam? That I haven't had on for a good while. Uh -huh. Couldn't answer that question. I don't know how they're getting up there. Interesting. All right. And as you can see, I'm on, uh, well, you may not be able to see it. I'm on 14.233 right now. There's a what's called a QSO, Q-S-O, which means two people are having a conversation. That's all that Q-S-O means. They're talking. So uh, it's kind of rude to just jump in there and interrupt the QSO. It's possible to do it. If you want to, you just throw out your call sign uh, when there's no conversation right in between. And if they answer you back, then that kind of means you're welcome to come back, come into the conversation. Uh, a lot of times they'll just ignore you. Or they may not be able to hear you. That's possible too. Sometimes propagation doesn't go both ways. Normally it does. In other words, if you can hear a person, and especially if 
the signal is strong, it's more than likely you can talk to them uh, generally. So anyway, here little ICOM, all band. This was the first radio I bought and works great. Uh, after I got my license, I used this for a while until I stepped out there and bought some more radios. But it uh, works great. It's all band. I can talk on the repeaters. Uh, it's dual band, so I can talk on 70 centimeters, 2 meters, and I can talk on all the rest of the bands. And I can even do digital on this digital communications, which I'm going to show you in a minute, uh, on this radio using this little box way over here. I don't know if you can see it. It's called a signal link. Signal link. You can Google that. Signal link. All one word. And it's basically a sound card in a box. And it permits you to attach a computer to the radio and uh, do text messaging for amateur radio. Uh, that's what I call the digital modes. Uh, instead of using uh, uh, phone and texting, uh, amateur radio operators use a radio and send RF out and text via radio without any internet. So with that said, let's cut this off for a second. <clears throat> and I'm going to pause right here, switch antennas. I have a little switch back there behind the desk and I just throw it and all of a sudden this flex radio, which is a software defined radio, it's a flex 3000, will be attached to the antenna that's outside. Uh, <clears throat> kind of a neat radio. You can Google Flex, F-L-E-X, radio. And uh, you can look at the Flex 3000 and also the new 6000 series that they just came out with. You can look at that. But we're going to show you that in a minute. And then we're going to show you some digital modes of communication on uh, using amateur radio. So stand by, we're going to switch antennas and I'll be right back. Okay, uh, welcome back again. And we're going to switch over to the flex radio. I'll turn the power supply on. Give it a second to kind of uh, get its act together. And then I'll switch on the flex radio. Now what's neat about this is, uh, you notice there's no knobs or buttons or dials or anything on this. It's got a few cables coming out of it. In fact, these cables, uh, one of them is connected to this mic. The other one in the back is connected to directly to the computer that's under this desk. Okay, and of course I've got a pair of earphones plugged in in case I want to listen with earphones uh, instead of on the speakers that are above the desk up here. <clears throat> uh, SDR radio simply means software defined radio, software defined. So all the controls for this radio are in software inside this computer. We're going to crank up the software now called Power SDR. And we'll start it up. <clears throat> and here it comes. And it is version 2.7, which is the latest version that's out as of January uh, uh, 2014. So here we are. We're on 20 meters. And uh, notice you're not hearing anything. Nothing's going on. Well, that's because I haven't started it yet up here. I'm going to start it. And again, I'm on a digital mode right now. In fact, I'm on, J on a particular frequency where hams transmit a mode called JT65. I'm going to let you hear that in a minute. I'll turn up the volume and let you hear it. And then we may, uh, we'll crank up the software and just let you see it in operation. And then we're going to go check a few more digital modes out. So here we are, and believe it or not, <clears throat> those signals 
are text messages coming through. There's probably multiple text messages coming through. And let me turn up the volume a little bit and let you hear what they sound like. It sounds like music. And there you go. And remember, you can do this on this ICOM 7000 also, as long as you have a, uh, some kind of a sound card plugged into it, uh, like a Signal Link or a Rig Blaster and various ones out there that you can plug into the ICOM 7000 and do the same thing I'm doing with this SDR radio. All right, so I'm on uh, right now 14.076 which is where they hang out on 20 meters, this is 20 meters, uh, to talk to each other long distances. What's cool about this mode is it takes very little power, usually under 20 watts, 20 watts of transmission power. A lot of people are only running 5 or 10 watts, and the signals go through long distances using uh, JT65 and the free software which we're going to open up right now that runs JT65 and here it is and let's make sure that it's hearing it and everything yes it is and let's see how big we can make this window and there we go There we go. So, as you can see, it's got a little waterfall on it, and these are all the various signals coming in right now. It's kind of a quirky mode. You transmit for a minute, and then you get an answer for a minute, and then you transmit back during the next minute. Uh, the computer time must be synced perfectly to the second. So there's some special software out there that goes out and uh, checks these time servers and uh, accurately puts in the time to within one second, uh, actually less than one second. The one that's built into most computers, the Windows uh, internet time thing that everybody knows what I'm talking about, that won't work. You have to have uh, special software that gets the real time and uh, fixes the time for the lag uh, using an al algorithm in the uh, time software that gets it synced almost perfectly to the real time to within a few seconds. So here you go, that last transmission that you heard, we've got a whole bunch of messages here, one, two, three, four, five five different uh, signals coming in and the ones in green are the people that are calling CQ which means seek you seek you I'm looking for you that's what that means and they'd like somebody to answer them back so uh, <clears throat> using this software you could communicate with these people over long distances let me see where some of these people are located we've got a K0 GRC let's just see who he is and of course I'm on uh, QRZ.com and I'll just type in his call sign which is K0 GRC K0GRC and let's see who he is he is Michael Sullivan in Golden Colorado that's where he's located at notice how I did that on QRZ.com you can look up uh, virtually anyone on QRZ.com uh, I would encourage you to register and everything because you can't see all the information that's available unless you are registered and logged on and, and uh, it's worthwhile to be a member of QRZ.com so that's one guy on there and oh well, look at this one this is a VK3 
B O B Bob B K three B O B V K three B O B and he is in Australia <laughs> in Australia um, let's see I can't quite say the name Bentley East okay in Australia wherever that is and VK3 BOB and and we're actually receiving his signal right now and could probably talk right back to him and have a contact in Australia remember most of these people are running under 20 watts right now under 20 watts so anyway that's JT65 that's only one of dozens of digital modes out there so if you're a computer geek and you like to fool around with software on a computer there is a bunch of it in ham radio most of it is free uh, this is free for example this particular software package and uh, all you have to do is install it and learn how to use it and uh, use it to communicate uh, virtually around the world so let's look at another mode now <clears throat> We're going to move down the band a little bit on the flex radio to 14070, which is where the PSK31 people hang out. PSK31, you can Google that, PSK31. And uh, you can let me let you listen to this signal for a minute. It's different, it's a different sounding signal. Here we go. And you can actually see the signals on the waterfall pan adapter. So that's what PSK31 sounds like. There's some websites you can go to uh, where some hams have recorded the various sounds. And uh, you can use these websites to kind of learn what the signal, what, what kind of signal it is uh, by the sound. And uh, again, if you'll Google uh, ham radio digital mode sounds, uh, you'll go to some sites with the uh, uh, mp3 files of these various uh, digital signals and what they sound like <clears throat> so let's there's another software package that I personally like and I use for PSK 31 again it's free and it's called FL Digi FL Digi and I've just opened it up and let's view the signals and there we go and this is again is called F L Digi D I G I F L Digi free software Google it find out all about it and you can Google PSK 31 and find out all about that particular mode so here we go we got a whole bunch of uh, communications going on and you can see them coming down the waterfall here this is a real neat mode uh, you can see the signals here on your right and if I wanted to talk to this fella here there's another guy uh, uh, trying to call Australia but if I wanted to talk to him all I have to do is double click him and he starts showing up over here and my software automatically moves me to his frequency exactly so that we can talk back and forth and all I have to do is click one of these signals and I moved there see how I moved right there or you can move it manually to any place you want to be which is what you should do if you're going to transmit 
You need to get away from these people and get over here where there's no signals showing up on the waterfall, and that's where you transmit CQ from. You don't transmit CQ on top of somebody else. That's rude, so we don't want to do that. But anyway, great uh, little program. All it does is PSK31, which is the most popular digital mode out there. It's probably PSK31, and uh, this does it. So translates perfectly, not too hard to learn, and again, it's free. Now there's another software package out there that a lot of hams use, and that's called Ham Radio Deluxe. Again, there's a free version, five point something version that's free, but the paid version is 6.x, point, uh, 6.x. Six point so you have to pay for the 6.x, but the 5.x is free. Uh, me being a cheap ham, I have the free version, which seems to work just fine. So let's crank up Ham Radio Deluxe. All right, and notice I've automatically got the digital part of Ham Radio Deluxe opens up, and I don't know if you can read this screen or not, or how the resolution is coming out on here, but these are digital modes. You can see it fills up all this part of the screen so if I wanted to receive or transmit in this particular mode I would click it so you can see there's dozens of different modes that are possible uh, to transmit and receive digitally so uh, we're gonna try to go to PSK 31 here let's see right here and now, as you can see, I'm, I'm sitting on a signal right down here. Here's your signals across the bottom. And uh, they do have a, what's called a, they call it a super sweeper. Don't ask me why, but it, and I'm going to click that right now. And there it is. And again, it's showing the signals individually and it's decoding them and translating them in real time works in a similar fashion you know I can click this signal here and I'm on that frequency if I want to talk to that particular person so uh, works the same way as FL Digi just looks a little different a lot of people prefer Ham Radio Deluxe. Uh, it's a very complicated program. I really haven't spent a lot of time trying to learn it. I have used it to decode uh, Morse code. It does that too. If you put it on a Morse code signal, it will start translating the code for you. But it's kind of dependent on how good the person is that's keying the Morse code. If he's a bad sender, it's not going to be able to transmit. But it does a pretty good job of translating Morse code, this very same program. And, uh, of course, it does all the digital modes. So a lot of people like this. I usually do PSK31, and now I've started doing JT65. Kind of hang around those two modes, so um, I find this overly complicated just to do those two modes. But that's my own personal opinion. So let me shut this down for you. <coughs> Give it a chance to go away. Bring up the uh, SDR again, radio, and with that. I hope I have tweaked your interest in the hobby. As you can see, there. I'm going to move over here. Let's just uh, take a pause for a minute, and I'll back this camera up. So, with that said, I hope I've uh, tweaked your interest in some of the software modes of uh, ham radio. And it's not just uh, people on the radio talking. There's a lot of software out there that uh, you can uh, do digital communications. It's very interesting.
to learn how to do that. So I would encourage you, if you have any interest in this hobby, uh, you can go to ARRL.com and uh, look around that site, register yourself, even though you don't have a call sign, you can still register. And they post uh, where tests are held, licensed tests are held, all over the country, all over the USA. There's usually uh, somewhere nearby where you live, no matter where you live in the USA, where someone is giving uh, either the technician test or the general test or the extra test uh, somewhere nearby you usually every month so I encourage you to uh, get involved in the hobby uh, there's a bunch of phone apps that you can download to uh, start practicing taking the test and also the ARRL has some books uh, about getting your technician's license and your uh, general or extra license and uh, you can buy those books and study for the test. What I did, I bought the book, I read it and then I practiced on my phone taking the test over and over again uh, until I was able to pass it on the phone and then I went and took the real test did the same thing for my general license. So with that said, it's a great little hobby. Uh, it's very interesting. It's like continuing to learn new things no matter how old you are. You can learn new things and this is one of those things that you can learn. And you also get to meet some interesting people while you're learning. With that said, as usual, I wish you clear skies and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. 73, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. See y'all later.